So over the last two weeks, it's been quite the mother trucker. Let me go back two weeks ago and show you how we started and where we are today. All right, so this week on Spray River Homestead, things are getting real around here. So if you look behind me, I'll show you right there. That smoke is just over the hill from us. It's getting, uh, my, my skin's crawling. That's a fire right up over the hill. That's, we thought was maybe 10 miles. It's probably less than five from the house. And there's nothing out there, so they're going to let that burn, and it's eventually coming towards us. So I'm going to document this week to see what happens, but this fire season's getting nasty. And uh, it may be time to start defending the homestead from Mother Nature. So if I show you over here where I'm dark, you can see these clouds. These aren't clouds. These are smoke. So this is about 15 minutes later. This thing is picking up steam. We're going to go check it out in a little bit after chores and dinner. But uh, it's getting serious up in here. So good morning. So we actually made it through the night. And the fire we drove through last night, we thought, oh, that's got to be close. And actually, it was about 20 miles away. But it was a large, very large barn fire that was... Uh, Totally destroyed somebody's hay crop so they have lost everything now as you can see because of that you can see behind me that the hills are completely gone in smoke you can't see around them you can see in the haze in the trees that is uh, probably just a few hundred yards from me if not less so if I spin around you can kind of see behind you know normally you can see hills up in here that is the main road and knowing that that's three quarters of miles away that is probably 300 yards you can't even see beyond that so so if I walk out a little bit uh, closer to solar panels and that you can see up in the hills it's really smoky so those fires are completely burning out of control they're not contained or they're like two percent contained and they're between three and four hundred acres is the one from yesterday so it went from a barn to 400 acres overnight and it's so rocky they can't even contain it. So it's going to be exciting this week to see where these fires actually get to. But uh, you can see where 20 miles is away. That's us. I can't even imagine what's like over that way. So they're shutting down highways. They are evacuating. And it's going to be rough this week. So get ready. Okay, so welcome back to Sprague River Homestead. This week, well, we're just going to give you some updates on where we're at. So if you noticed last week, we did not put up a video, and that was mostly because of some family drama that kind of took our attention away from the homestead. So if you remember back in April, we did the one-day bedroom makeover, and I'll put a link up there just in case you missed it. We redid the back bedroom for our nephew to move in. Now, he has decided that this was not the life for him, and he wanted to go a different direction. So he moved out a couple weeks ago, and it did not turn out well on all fronts. So he has left us, and it's just back to Nikki and I here on the homestead. Well, in the last couple of weeks, I've started doing the fall canning. Um, these are some of the banana peppers. We already got uh, six pints of those, and I've got some bells that are coming on, and some cherry peppers, and a whole bunch of stuff. I did some salsa. We've got some tomatoes for my folks, because ours have not turned colors yet, although I do see two or three that are trying to. So this week we are expecting a frost or a freeze. Uh, we're forecasted for 34 degrees overnight for Thursday night. So I will be hard at work this week building some greenhouse covers for all of this and trying to get a strategy in place. Probably things like the potatoes, we'll just go ahead and let them burn off because they're getting close to harvest anyway. But all of our peppers and tomatoes and cucumbers are just now getting going so we're gonna have to try and see what we can do to save those guys otherwise we're gonna lose them all <laughs> so one thing I'm working on right now and we're almost done thankfully is our usual um, fall checkup we're going through and weighing everybody to see how they're doing I actually try and do that quarterly catch up on toenails worm the entire herd which I do twice a year spring and, and fall and we're just getting everybody back in shape so that we can start getting ready for our fall show season and also for our fall breeding because we have taken the last part of the summer off. So everybody, I think my last litters were born the end of July. So we're starting to breed now so we can make lots of little show bunnies for the fall. So our next show, our first show of the fall season is actually this next weekend. I'm going to be up in Redmond, Oregon for the annual Corba show, uh, the High Desert Hop. And then the weekend after that, 
uh, is going to be over in Grants Pass, Oregon for the um, Rogue Valley Rabbit Fanciers annual show. And we're actually having a Harlequin specialty. So if you are near either one of those places, feel free to come down and say hello. I'll be down there with some of our Harlequins and Americans and a little Rex that I'm tinkering with right now. So we will be out and about. So if you notice the shop itself, the siding is actually pretty clean. So I took the time yesterday to uh, use a pressure washer on it. And I'm on vacation this week, finally taking some time off of work. So one of the things I'm going to do is paint the shop and we'll see where we get to on the house. But we're going to change from kind of just a wood to kind of like a mint green with a chocolate brown trim. So it should uh, look pretty nice and that'll be done this week. I'm just going to kind of nibble at it just a little bit here, a little bit there and try to stay out of the heat a little bit. So as I've said in the past, it is firewood season for us. So you can see we've got the first bin here that is almost done and just, just need a little bit more there. And then you can look at the second one there that is, has nothing in it. So we normally use about one and a half of these per winter. And so we try to get two, and then this year we're gonna double up and try to get three of these full to have probably about two years of firewood. So if you ever wanna know how to build these, I'll put a link up top. Pretty simple, out of cattle panels, a tarp, and a few pieces of wood. But if you need something for firewood, these are pretty awesome to have around. Well, I've had some time this week to finally come back to the chicken house and waterfowl house project. So we started in, gosh, I think July. Uh, the weather kind of cooled off on me, so I was able to get started. We, this one is actually about ready for the siding, so I brought the siding up from a pile that we had out by the barn. And with a little bit of luck, even though I've got a show going on this coming weekend, I'm going to at least try and get it sided, if not get the roof started as well. So the goal is still to have these done, both of them, by the time the snow falls, hopefully by October. Might be a little ambitious, we'll see. Well, like I mentioned out in the garden, uh, I've been doing a little canning. So these are some of the banana peppers that we've actually been able to can in the last two weeks. Made some salsa out of the tomatoes for mom and dad. We also got a million of the um, little sweet one million or sweet 100 cherry tomatoes. And I actually cut them in half and dry them in the food dryer to make sun-dried tomatoes, which by the way, takes forever because you have to cut each one in half. Made some plum butter. Did some plum sauce, and then I've got these little beauties that need to be done. Mom and Dad gave us a whole big bag of uh, crookneck squash, so I will be getting these ready for freezing. And then a girlfriend gave me all these adorable little miniature Bartlett pears, so I will be canning these little guys this week, too. I've got an entire box of them. So that is just some of what's going on. We've also butchered out some rabbits, so I did all of that into ground meat, so... We are busy socking away stuff to fill the pantry for the winter. So speaking of winter, I've got the baler, which this is the baler and this is the main plunger. This is all greased up with white lithium grease. So I've got all the tracks that this slides on all down in there and pulled the plunger all the way back. So it sits on grease and there's nothing in there that can rust. So now with the baler done, all I need to do is throw a tarp over it and it is ready for winter. And that'll keep for next year and we won't have to spend three days trying to break loose that plunger to bale hay. So again, the teeth on these the blades need to be redone. We know that. We need the rake to be redone. Yes, we need to do that too next year. So this is at least going to be good for the winter with the tarp and we won't have to worry about it again. So that's it for this week on Sprague River Homestead. We are steadily busy. So... You can always check out what we're doing on Instagram and Facebook. It's a lot easier to post rather than putting the other videos in that. But we'll try to keep you updated weekly on YouTube. And I think that's it. You got anything else? Nope. Good here. See you next time from Spray River Homestead. <laughs>